So in this video, I'm gonna highlight three mistakes that I see that are commonplace and that are kind of obvious and they're hard to even like recognize and how we can solve them and what we should be doing instead so that you can grow your business and delight your guests. Look, hospitality is challenging. You're dealing with people, you've got employees and it's inevitable, we are going to fail. There's going to be an issue, there's going to be somebody who's disappointed, there's going to be a ball dropped. It just happens and how you deal with that is really critical not only for your business and your brand but also your reputation. And the most common mistake I see made time and time again even by very successful people is if an incident occurs, what do most people do? Offer a discount. Right? Sorry, we'll take that off your bill. Sorry, we'll give you $100. Sorry, we'll give you $100 credit towards something else. But you introduce money into that. And if you stop and think about it for a second, that's really wrong. Now you've taken this relationship that we're trying to grow and you've introduced a transaction and subtly, you may not intend to do this, but what you're actually doing is saying, hi, disappointed guest, I can actually buy your happiness for the cost of one free drink, $100 off, $100 credit. And that's actually quite insulting. Like nobody likes to feel like they can be bought or they're for sale. In all of my service businesses over time, we view these mistakes as a great opportunity to turn it full circle and show them just how valuable they are and how awful we feel about it, but we don't introduce money. That's the biggest mistake. So for instance, if you've had an incident, rather than say, we'll take this off your bill or we won't bill you or we'll give you a credit or something like that, and you find out that the people that are coming here, they're celebrating their anniversary or something like that, have a dozen roses delivered to the room. Delight them, surprise them, do something special for them that makes them feel seen and heard and important and valued. Now, yes, we're paying for the flowers and that's a financial consideration, but that's so unexpected and they're not used to getting that. They're used to saying, oh, we're sorry, there's nothing we can do and so on and so forth. Again, hospitality is broken. So if you think about delighting them, what can you do to surprise them? And don't make it financial and don't send the ordinary bottle of champagne. I'm saying send flowers now, delight the, the wife or the girlfriend, uh, delight the person that's, that was wronged in a way that's special and unique to them. So you have to be thoughtful, you have to be creative, you have to use your emotional intelligence, but that's what's going to really move the needle. And in doing so, you can take this bad situation where you're apologizing and you feel awful, you think you ruined the day, and you can come out the other side and you can delight them and be a hero and bond with them and drive that relationship further because they feel seen and heard and important and relevant as opposed to just another cog in the machine. And it's so surprising because it's so rare. And it's that's the crazy thing about it. It's not that hard, but it's so infrequent and so unexpected that it creates joy and delight. Another mistake I see people make is err to the side of professionalism or business person, when in reality what people crave is relationship and authenticity. So don't try and be somebody that you're not and communicate in a very professional manner so that you get their respect and so on and so forth. Just be yourself. And by the way, if you're not a good writer, then find somebody who is a good writer to communicate via email. If you're not a great orator on the telephone, then find somebody who is great. But the point is, you have to be authentic. Don't try and be the Ritz Carlton when you're actually running a motel. Don't try and be the Four Seasons when you've actually got you know a small Airbnb. But when you have that small Airbnb, Treat these people as individuals. Pretend your best friend was coming. Pretend your sister was coming and talk to them like you would your sister, not Mr. Jones, we'd like to welcome you over here and please follow me and like, forget about all that. That time is in the past. The future today is about authenticity and realizing who's in front of you and what matters to them. Put yourself in their shoes, pretend your sister's coming, whatever it is, but be authentic. More often than not, the people that are coming to visit you, whether it's at your Airbnb or your hotel, are traveling to your location. Either they've been there many times and they would love to see something new, whether it's a new local product, a new local flavor, a new local experience, a new local band, or they've never been there and this is your opportunity to introduce them to you know, sort of the locals. If you think about how Airbnb started, it was live like a local. Well, 
I think we've moved away from that. And now it's just like purely business and it's kind of run by mom and pop that have scaled and they have one, two, three, five, ten 10 places. And now these standard operating procedures, we have to go back to our roots as humans and care for one another. And that's what everybody's craving. So be authentic, be genuine, try and care and just delight people. Stop worrying about your standard operating processes. Stop worrying about being efficient and start worrying about being effective. One more mistake I see people make time and time again, and now I'm going to the business of this. More often than not, people are risk averse and they're scared about vacancy. And so in order to drive occupancy, you lower your rates, you take a look at your competitors, and you're really focused on like bookings and occupancy because the unknown and the vacancy risk is really frightening and it's, you know, it's a big daunting thing and we have a mortgage to bake and we have employees and we have all these other things. But in doing that, in focusing on your competition, you're really bringing yourself down to their standards. And that's exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be bringing yourself up to your own standards, deliver more value, charge more. If you charge more money, you can have greater vacancy and still make just as much profit with less wear and tear. Now, I know it's really challenging because the average person is used to discounting and giving three nights for the price of two and all of these other things that we think drive value in our good business decisions. But I wanna challenge you and encourage you to think differently. That's where the opportunity is. In the next generation of hospitality, we can't do the same things that have not worked in the past. We have the opportunity to rewrite the rules and do it our own way, define our own path and generate our own profitability. And the people that are these outliers, they're the ones that people talk about, they're the ones that people wanna buy their business, Businesses. They're the ones that are thinking differently and creating world-class you know, businesses and brands and passion and excitement. So do not do what everyone else does, which is compete with everybody and lower your prices. Think about how you can raise your prices and delight even more and justify it and raise your standards so that you earn it. You deliver maximum value at higher prices. Guess what? You will be more profitable, not less. So friends, now I have a favor to ask of you. Please comment below with questions that you have, issues that you faced, so that we can go ahead and answer them in future videos. I really appreciate it, thank you.